Hello, I'm Colin Mister, a.k.a. Das Dubois. No. No. Stop it. Stop it. It's not funny. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Okay, anyway, guys, I'm Greg Redke of Redke Mods, and welcome to part three of the non-unibody early 2008 MacBook builds. Uh, I'm not calling this the cheapest anymore because we made it the cheapest um, and it worked fine. But uh, as I was setting it up to do more future videos for it, I figured out a few problems with it. First, the brand new optical drive I bought for it died. Um, it would read the discs, it would be able to pull up the images and the files on it. But once it did that, it wouldn't read it any further. You couldn't pull files off of it and it would just basically give up reading. You couldn't even boot off of it. Um, so the seller, even though I was past the uh, warranty date, um, he had a 30-day warranty on it, and I messaged him probably the 40-something, somewhere in 40 days time period. Um, he was gracious enough to fully refund me, so I got a free broken optical drive. Uh, which we're going to be tossing to the side. Um, as I was also continuing to set it up, I uh, noticed that the drive didn't seem to want to write anything to it. I was wanting to do multiple operating systems on the system, and um, it just didn't seem to want to write. And then, uh, eventually, it just stopped booting. So, yeah, the hard drive on the inside of it, which I also, by the way, found out it was probably replaced somewhere in 2010 or 2011. It's a 2010 drive, but it's an Apple drive. So um, all of it was probably original, but that hard drive when I got it. But anyway, I found out that drive just, it, it's dead. Um, you can read, it can see it, it, the drive, the system thinks it's a healthy drive, um, but it just eventually stops writing and stops doing things. So we're going to be replacing that with this Vase key um, solid state drive, which I saw it had good reviews on Newegg for being a brand name I've never heard of before. Um, I've already set up these two drives. This drive is going to replace the optical drive. Um, it's running Snow Leopard on it and probably will be running a Windows partition. I don't know how boot camps going to like running off of this PETA interface here but we'll see. But anyway, uh, this already has Mojave set up on it and it's ready to boot up onto it. So we'll be installing these two drives and seeing how it happens. So let's go. Okay, so I already pulled the case apart and uh, quickly we'll show you the uh, optical drive bay hard drive adapter here. This is a SATA to uh, optical PETA adapter here. And as we can see, I've already set this entire drive up with the uh, brackets and stuff that were required for um, the old optical drive, which had brackets also. And uh, so I could already set it up and uh, get it all ready. So we're just going to install it directly in. A few screws, it pops out, pops back in, etc., etc. This should work quite well. And then we've got the base key SSD here. I hope this works well. And uh, let's do a quick time lapse of me trying to get all the stuff in. So let's go.
Okay, there it is with everything installed. Um, so hopefully it will, sh it should all just work. Uh, what I am going to do is reassemble this off camera because, well, it's a pain to uh, get it back together for one thing and get all the screws in perfectly. Um, and it just takes time to do it. So, yeah, we'll uh, see this on the very first boot up. So uh, we'll see you in a second. Okay, it's time for the very first power up. Uh, we'll go into the boot menu to see what drives show up here and take it from there. So let's hit the power button and hold in option. And it looks like the optical drive is not being seen. So let's go into EFI boot and see if it's going to be a problem where it won't be a bootable drive. That would suck. Okay, so we will go into Finder here. And I am not seeing any drives. Oh, that's disappointing. The drive is not working. I'm not sure why. But hey, the SSD is working, so that's good. Uh, there's a possibility that the um, PETA bus just doesn't support uh, supply enough power, or the adapter doesn't work, or the wire doesn't work, or there could be a many different things. Could just be that the hard drive doesn't work. Um, I did have problems writing to it, even though it's a, a, a new drive. Um, I just got it in e from eBay. So, um, yeah, um, looks like I'll have to be troubleshooting it. So I put my ear to the drive, and it sounds like um, it's trying to power up, but just doesn't have enough juice. It sounds like everything's hooked up right. So I'd say the drive is too powerful for the... Uh, PETA interface So that's a problem. I'll have to find a lower powered drive. I guess or I'm not sure yet Okay, so I'm just going to try to record the sound the hard drive makes you can hear It's just trying to start up, but doesn't ever really get spinning up enough to run Then you'll eventually hear it spin down. So, um, yeah, I don't think it's getting enough power. We're going to first try to replace the PETA cable and see if that fixes it. And if that doesn't fix it, we'll try the dead hard drive, which um, it still runs, sort of. Um, I don't think it's going to be good enough for an operating system. Um, but it will be good enough to test. I think this will probably run on less power than the WD Blue in it. Um, by the way, that WD Blue I didn't order. I ordered one of these. They sent me a totally different drive. So, yeah. Anyway, I don't trust WD Blues a whole lot, uh, but oh well. And uh, this drive actually looks like it might be too thick to fit in here to begin with so yeah that's another problem but we'll at least be able to see if it works so yeah let's go so here's something interesting guys I didn't expect to see it looks like the 2007 PETA cable might be damaged or just totally different um, compared to the 2008 so if I replace it hey the drive might work so let's see what happens and look at that, the PETA cable from the 2007 was either different or indeed damaged. Because now we see the Snow Leopard drive. So what I'm going to do is 
reassemble everything and uh, we'll continue on from there. Okay, so let's try this again. Hold in the option key. And here are all the drives. Now what I'm going to do first is to boot into Mojave so you can see the drives. And this is much quicker than it was uh, when it was running on this hard drive. This hard drive really did not like APFS. All this you're watching right now is in real time. Um, this hard drive, even before it was really failing, I guess, uh, it just did not like APFS. And as we can see, it's about finished booting up. Maybe. Here it comes. Yeah. So that's, I'm not really sure I didn't time it. But um, I'll, I'll put the time up on the screen, if anything. It is pretty quick. Um, it's a lot quicker than it was. It took like three minutes or more on the hard drive to boot up. Um, probably towards five minutes, really. It was, it was really, really slow. Um, and eventually, of course, it just stopped booting all uh, together. So, yeah. ISTAT menu sees all hard drives. If we go over to about this Mac and go to storage, we can see both hard drives. One says it's an AT8 disk and the other one says it's a SATA disk. This one's already been set up for boot camp. I just need to install Windows and um, let's see here. We'll go back to overview system report something is really taxing the CPU right now it's probably indexing the drive anyway go to ATA we can see our new hard drive in the optical drive bay here that works we go over to SATA we can see the VASCI uh, 256 gig SATA, uh, I mean SSD here, it works. So what we're going to do now is first off I need to set this as uh, the Mojave as startup disk. We'll go over and set Mojave as the startup disk. But now we can also select Snow Leopard, which is cool. So what we're going to do is restart it and go back into the boot menu and boot up into Snow Leopard and see if that works. Okay, so we're back in the boot menu. We'll go and boot it into Snow Leopard. And as we can see, Snow Leopard's really quick. That was all real time there. Snow Leopard loves hard drives, um, whereas Pojave really doesn't. But we're fully booted in the Snow Leopard, running a fully updated copy of it, and it is working quite well, as we can see. It's really, really quick. It's impressive how quick this is. I uh, decided to put Snow Leopard on here so I could uh, also use PowerPC applications with um, Rosetta and um, do a few other things. Um, 
this is basically the wrap up of today's video but um, basically there's still going to be one more part part four will go over the entire system and how it runs I'm currently going to set up windows on here so we have that on there too um, and what we'll do is we'll we'll show you everything it's capable of doing today and um, it, I'm really excited about this. This thing's working great now that we can figure it out that this cable is junk. So yeah, it works. Uh, everything's running. You know, I can't complain about that. Anyway, so anyway, guys, don't forget that I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com. If you go to SellYourMac.com slash RutkMods and sell an Apple device, it would help me out. Uh, a whole lot and it would help you out too because you'll be getting money from it which is really awesome uh, also uh, don't forget now that I do have a patreon if you'd like to support me there will be a link in the description and also at the end of the video and um, that's the end of today's video so anyway thank you guys for watching and this has been a Rutke Mods video